Hello, hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I hope you have a fantastic day and that uh, it continues to get better. So uh, today I'm actually going to be talking about um, what's under the ice. Um, it's, uh, it's our secret weapon, actually, you know, um, um, secret weapon that everyone has and uh, can take you all the way to the moon or to the bottom of a bottle. Um, and, and this is called our subconscious mind. Um, and our, our subconscious mind, it, uh, it contains, a, it's like a recipe, like three parts, uh, you know, childhood memories, two parts of your parents' voice, and emotional expression. And also throw in four cups of traumatic events and a dash of self-preservation. So it kind of sounds like a lot, right? That's because it is. The subconscious mind is the super processor for the brain. Um, and we can't access it on command. Why? Because it's meant to be unconscious. If we had unlimited access to it, we would never leave our heads. It stores how we react to similar situations um, that we've had in the past. It spikes our emotions and anxiety to prepare us for uncertainty and even may cause us to relive traumatic events from our past, like a poorly written sequel. Depending on your upbringing, <laughs> it can be your greatest weapon or your biggest hater. Um, so, so what does it do exactly? Uh, so this information was actually collected by Brian Tracy International, and I'll provide the link right here. Um, your subconscious mind causes you to feel emotionally and physically uncomfortable whenever you attempt to do anything new or different. It goes against changing any of your established patterns of behavior, and you can feel your subconscious pulling you back towards your comfort zone each time you try something new. Even thinking about doing something different from what you've, uh, you're accustomed to will make you feel tense and uneasy. Its job is to ensure that you respond exactly the way you're programmed. Your subconscious mind makes everything you say and do fit a pattern consistent with your self-concept. This is your master program, your internal voice. So your subconscious mind is an unquestioning servant. It works day and night to make your behavior fit a pattern consistent with your emotionalized thoughts, hopes, and desires. Your subconscious mind grows either flowers or weeds in the garden of your life. Whichever you plant is based on the mental equivalents you create. Now, these are the ways that our subconscious talks to us. And this information was gathered by Roma Sharma. Um, it can be through anxieties and phobias. Our, ne our neurology is constantly trying to protect us from things that represent a threat to us. If a person has a fear of heights, it's quite possible that as a baby, he fell off the first step of a ladder and his, neurolo his neurology registered that. Hence, creating fear of heights as a way of protecting him in the future. Anxieties work in a similar way. The fear in the mind will get us to fight or flight. Avoid a person or situation completely. Again, a way of keeping us safe. Dreams. Uh, so when we sleep, our subconscious mind checks out giving way to our subconscious mind to do the work. Uh, dreams are when we, uh, when we go to sleep, our, our conscious mind checks out, and, and that gives way to our, our subconscious mind to do the work. Our dreams help our subconscious to communicate back to our conscious mind. Sometimes we remember our memories. Sometimes there's a re reoccurring dream or a pattern followed by our dreams. We might not consider this to be important, but I think it is. Go over what you remember and see if there is a message in it for you. There is nothing called a random thought. All thoughts come from something we have already experienced. The dream will usually fit into something that was emotionally charged for us. Uh, then there's going to be idle thoughts. So what are we thinking about when, we are, when we're idle? Um, you know, most of us think that uh, thoughts we have when we are sitting idle are unimportant. They're just some things that come to us since we are sitting free. This is the biggest misconception. Our idle thoughts speak volumes about what is stored in our subconscious mind. There aren't people who, <laughs> I'm sorry, there are people who can't sit and meditate or even sit idle for, for five minutes as their thoughts would just nuke them. Well, that is an indication of the amount of energy, usually negative, but is spinning in the subconscious mind. This can sap a person of his very life force because for every unit of energy you store in your subconscious, you need another unit of energy to keep it there. And then there's manifestations in the body. The subconscious is nothing but a meat suit. Delicious. <laughs> so you're... 
so your body could develop sensations such as butterflies in the stomach, palpitations in the heart, etc., based on a good or bad feeling coming up for you. When you have a headache or any other body ache, it's usually your subconscious trying to communicate something back to you. Maybe it needs your attention to resolve something of importance. Likewise, manifestations in the body can also be seen when you have good feelings, like when you're looking forward to something enjoyable. Um, and then uh, this last information is provided by um, John A. Barg, who wrote Our Unconscious Mind. Uh, he actually works with Harvard. Um, so decision-making often occurs without people giving much thought to how they vote, what they buy, or where they go on vacation, to how they make a myriad of other minor and major choices. Unconscious processes dictate the way we deliberate and plan our lives, for good reason. Automatic judgments are essential for dodging an oncoming car or bus. Behaviors governed by the unconscious go beyond looking both ways. Embedded attitudes allow the level of awareness to shape many of our attitudes towards others. Now, all this information has been studied and shared by greater minds than I. Um, I cannot take any credit for, for the research as I am an unfinished undergrad with a tendency to overfocus on really cool stuff. So um, unlocking the potential of ADHD is uh, kind of one of the things I'm, I'm trying to focus on right now. You know, it, it, it's your brain's always going all the time. You can't always pull it when you need the information and... It's always looking for dopamine. So, um, but you know, I, I want to share this information with you because sometimes we look at ourselves after some terrible behavior or poor choices and go, "Why did I do that? I knew better. I'm trying to make better choices, but it's so difficult. Why can't I seem to pull away from the things that make me comfortable?" That's because your subconscious mind is always working. It's working to discover the best course of action for the for self-preservation and situations similar to ones we experienced as kids. If your parents were harsh and told you negative things about yourself that may later become your internal voice, um, telling you you can't achieve anything. So if you experienced violence or aggression in your childhood, it's apt to reoccur in your life as this is what you were subconsciously programmed to do. This is why we get super angry or anxious or excited when certain triggers activate these deeply seated neural ne neural pathways. But have hope, friends. Have you ever seen books about mindset, mastery, or habits to being a more effective or happy individual? Well, there is truth to these things, but they're not instantaneous. We have to ritualize the behavior we want to keep concrete in our lives. The reason it takes 21 days or so to form a habit is because as you rest, your, un your conscious mind dumps what you've learned into your subconscious and it becomes instinct. Um, make no mistakes, this is the primal part of the brain. It will help communicate to you the things your body wants and the things you truly desire. It takes the conscious mind and conscious effort every day to manifest these new habits and traits. If you keep at it with determination, it will soon become second nature. Now, it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything, and maybe this is why. The subconscious mind will always overpower the conscious mind as it is the gatekeeper to self-preservation. It helps you regulate your well-being and even self-care or coping habits. So yes, you can break free of addictive behaviors and from trauma response, but it takes time and sometimes it takes ED EMDR therapy. Um, I'm actually participating in uh, my first week and uh, I'll be honest, I was a bit nervous, but, um, you know, it's, it's meant to, to help relieve the emotional sting of traumatic memories and lessen the emotional response so that it can be more within a realm of reasonable reaction. Ask yourself, what did I experience as a child that is now a prominent behavior in my life? Do you often have super self-critical thoughts or resort to open aggression? Or do you withdraw and feel as if your emotions don't matter? No one wants to consciously make bad decisions and adopt bad behaviors unless they truly have misguided or malicious intent. What are your motivations behind your actions? Are you trying to suppress emotional responses because they don't feel right? Well, after years of training, your brain says they are right. They are the right course of action. It worked for those around me as a kid. So why wouldn't it work for me today? Now let's take a look at how we 
actively reform and listen to the subconscious. Hold on, guys. It's about to get real uncomfortable. So a couple things I've learned through my watchings of YouTube videos and um, listening to audiobooks is that we can actually access and listen to our subconscious mind by doing things like meditation or yoga, things that free up conscious thought. And, and, and they pull the subconscious to the, to the surface. Um, that's why having a clear mind and being mindful is so crucial to understanding your thoughts and behaviors. Pieces of the iceberg break off, float to the surface. And we start to understand ourselves more. Without it, our brain is basically operating at 5%. That sounds like a handicap if I've ever heard of one. Other things you can do are ritualistic behaviors that promote positivity and self-care. This is a much longer route, but the payoff is immense. You can also combine this with things like binaural beats or sleep hypnosis at night, uh, just, just to help promote reframing the mind, and it helps to coax those subconscious thoughts to the surface the next day. Have I done the intensive research? Am I a scientist? No, absolutely not. But I am starting to realize I've been letting my powerful processor lay dormant. I've been living my life through a script in my head every day. Attracting what it tells me I deserve or how I should react or feel in any given situation. I'm not trying to overload you since you won't retain this all in one sitting. But I can testify that once you start looking within, a whole new world of opportunities opens up. Um... And with that, I mean, below I shared a couple videos of uh, the subconscious and, and if you're interested in learning more. Um, and guys, feel free to hit the like button or subscribe and maybe leave a comment if you have some more information or process you'd love to share. Um, maybe share this with somebody who you think might benefit from this content. Um, guys, it's time to regain control of yourself. And I'm talking to myself. <laughs> but, you know... Uh, be, be the master of your own destiny. It starts and stops here. And as always, friends, you are valued. You are worthy of love. And you are worthy of success. Thank you for being here and being a part of my process. And I hope I can be a part of yours.